Howdy, I'm Matt and in this episode we've got something a little bit um, strange or maybe even peculiar for you. Now there's been quite a bit of a discussion in the Facebook group about the RC coffee chats and topics which, which you would like to see and there's been quite a few comments going on in that thread uh, and uh, there, there's been a bit of a recurring theme of like what's going on down here on the side of the desk keep com keeps coming up in the chat so that's what we're going to be taking a look at is that uh, uh, <laughs> there is quite a pile of crap down there uh, and it's all RC model related and uh, I thought it's a little stick on video so uh, I can at least bring you up to date with some of the projects which have been long forgotten uh, and just like shut down the side of the workbench to get fixed eventually so those of you which are watching this and feel like nagging me in about two months time, Matt, where's this and where's that? Please do so. But uh, in the interim, uh, <laughs> terrible turd, uh, we will uh, have a chit chat about what's going on down here. So the first things first is that I've still got the micro Skywalker down here. So if you didn't know about these little things, they, um, they're nicknamed the budgies. Uh, and because they're just so much fun, they just fly around like a little budgie uh, forever on 2S or even 3S if you dare. Uh, the thing is, I did kind of break the motor mount on the back of mine and it's got thrown down there and never repaired. So I feel really guilty about that because it is uh, such a great fun little model. Uh, I also need to pilfer, in there I've got one of the S-Bus to PWM converters because I was running short on receivers. Uh, and I need to pilfer that out because I need that for a different project. So I'm going to stick that... We need to do a separate video on the fix pile because it's quite big. Uh, so I'm going to gently put that over there and make sure I don't damage it. <laughs> oh, something which you haven't seen uh, is that I have not only but one, we've got the uh, 100 miles an hour Fluttergate project, which uh, is not down there. It's in the fixed pile. Um, yeah, that fixed pile is pretty bad. I need to sort that out. That's topic for a different video. Anyway, get back to the little glider. Uh, Andy brought two round. That's a lime green one. These things fly really well. And actually, I, I want to go slightly off topic because I've not only got one of those there which needs to go up on the shelves for storage, uh, is that I do have, and you may have seen this uh, over on Sir Andrew Newton's channel, uh, is that Andrew's brother has been and converted me one of these for, can you, you can just about see that, can't you? Let me just zoom in a second. Here you go, he's been and converted it for me so that you can do the, uh, is it aileron mod? Where basically the wings are the ailerons uh, and the elevator. So you set it up as basically as a flying wing and the whole wing moves. So I've got one of those here uh, ready to, to go at some point and that also needs to go in the um, to-do pile. I've, got, I've definitely got a fixed pile. I probably need a to-do pile as well. So we got that one down there. Like I said, this is never ending. And when Paul said in the Facebook group about this, and somebody said about that one, and somebody said about another model, and somebody said about another model, I thought, hang on, there's an episode in here somewhere. Uh, so that's why we're doing this. Now, we also have the FTC Hunter model. Now, this one is a bit of an oddity. Uh, is because I've not really flown it since. I took it out to the slope uh, and I slope sawed it. Now, it did great on the slope, uh, but the, what let it down was the FPV camera and transmitter. It was utter crap. I think that's the um, EF01 video, uh, little VTX all in one camera system on it. It's absolutely terrible, dog poo bad. Uh, so um, I will be ripping that out of there. The wing itself, the stabiliser is very weird, you don't think it's working, you'll actually chuck it in the sky and it actually works really well. You've got to just like give it a thumbs up for the, for the stabiliser side. That said, the instructions were terrible. There's me being very family friendly with that one. Uh, they were not very good. Uh, and you do need to provide S-Bus input to the little flight controller which is inside of the model itself. Uh, it, did, it did come with a motor and a propeller, uh, no idea what it was. Uh, but it does fly all right, surprisingly all right. It didn't meet my own requirements of something quite slow uh, to, to fly in and around the trees in the garden. So it did kind of fell on that on my own personal expectations. Uh, that said, it is black EPP. If you have some technical knowledge and know how to connect SBUS up and can work with absolutely no instructions, 
uh, you might, and, you, and you're after a small little wing, you might like it. I, like I said, I was genuinely surprised by how well the stabilizer and it worked. Uh, but it has been chucked down the side of the desk for quite a while. Uh, and the reason for that is that it just had such a terrible FPV camera in there, uh, which I, which I, by the way, I put in it. Uh, I need to rip it out and basically throw that little one in the bin because it was just awful. But it's not a five minute job, it's a 20 minute, half an hour job to sort it out and stuff. So maybe overestimating that one, but I just haven't had the will to sort it out. It's not been like, it's like really low on the priority list. Uh, moving on, uh, we have down the side of the desk, uh, the fair wing. Now, I'm gonna be brutally honest with you, I think this is one model complete waste of money. Uh, that said, I don't wanna to be too pessimistic on this one because I, I've seen these things flying and they do fly quite well. The reason why I don't like it is, there's two reasons. Uh, number one, I bought the plug and play kit uh, and the motor which they provided was so screamy. It's a 2,550 kV uh, motor, so, and it came with a tri-blade. Uh, and even on 3S, it screams like stupid loud. 4S is just intolerable. And it's not a good noise. I, it's just not a good noise from that motor. I do like the LED light bar, which they've got on the back, which you'll be able to see just there. Uh, that's one positive which I can say about it. Again, I like the plastic strips on the, the leading edges. Uh, but it's, it basically, uh, at the time, I said it was the S800, but uh backwards in every single way and I, I tend to stand by that except for i do like the led light bar at the back and i do like the plastic strips on the front but the battery bay is just atrocious uh you can just about fit a in fact there's me trying to lean it up let me zoom in so you can see uh you can just about fit in a 1300 3s pack in there uh that funny little board at the back is for the led uh and it's a Beck, it's all just silly over complicated for what it is. Uh, and I'm genuinely not really impressed with this model at all. And frankly, just don't waste your money on them. Unless they turn up on offer for 20 quid, 30 quid, uh, and there aren't any SA Andras available. Um, it doesn't waggle, well, noticeably. Again, I haven't flown at FPV. It's never really got to that stage. It just kind of, I was just like pissed off of it. Dis dis not pissed off, disappointed with the model. Uh, hence why it got stuck down there and I, I should just really stick it in the Facebook group and give it away or something I, I don't know maybe, maybe I should get around to finally properly doing a proper dedicated video on it and show you why I don't like it and I think it's a waste of money because uh, it did attract premium money at the time and I don't feel it's a premium wing the the s800 is far better value for money if you don't know what I'm talking about an s800 that is the reptile Sky Shadow S800, uh, and I'll put a link to that one in the video description. But this fair wing, not very good at all. I'll just fold that over there right away. Right, moving on. Uh, this one is a bit of an awkward one. This is or sent to me as a Hornet 2, but it's not a Hornet 2. Uh, and that's, that's a project which has been put on hold. I don't think it's fair for me to discuss that one any further. Um, yeah, that's an awkward one. Uh, moving on, rather quickly, uh, we need to talk uh, about the techs. Uh, so those of you which may remember or not remember, or you may not have seen this one, this was a little model which I bought uh, a while ago with a collection of weird little wings. And again, the wings are still sat over there, half built, etc., etc. Uh, this one never really took off and I never, it's been so basically it's been sat on the radiator behind me for far too long. And I keep forgetting it take, to keep forgetting to take it with me when we go flying. It has flown, but not very well. It needs somebody who is more competent than say the wife to launch it uh, while I jump on the sticks and fly it. Uh, so this one is very much a work in progress. It is ready to fly ish. It, like I said, it has flown, but it was all just completely wild. Uh, so what I'll be doing is sticking it over there in the pile so when we go flying on Sunday uh, I will get it out so I can't comment really on the flight characteristics of this one because I've hardly flown it and I mean hard I've done like one lap with it uh, and the pre previous flights were not good because the motor which I put on it wasn't very good at all. Uh, so that's the little text wing to give you an update on that one. It is here. It is ready to fly. I've just not taken it out to be flown. 
uh, mainly because I just keep forgetting it because it's down we're spinning down there down the back of the radiator as I'm sure you've seen it in other videos for the last couple of months hey -o, moving on what else have we got down here oh we have the lid to my Nitro 4x4 car, which is very much misbehaving at the moment. That doesn't belong in here. Uh, it's obviously just fallen down, in down the side of the desk. And I'm sure some of you might have a desk which is a little bit similar to mine. Uh, you might not have whole models down there. Uh, this is still another model to get pulled out in a moment. Uh, but I'm sure I, I can't be the only one which looks down the side of his desk and goes, I just cannot be bothered, family friendly, uh, to tidy this mess up. Uh, what else have we got down here? Oh, hello, completely forgotten about that. What else have we got down here? I, I won't kidding you like this a whole episode and what's down the side of Matt's desk. Uh, I have the, <laughs> I've so forgotten this. This is the El Schizo, uh, so if, if, by the way, if you don't recognize this model, this is called the Rare Bear. Um, if you can get them local to your country, get one. They're, they're about a hundred dollars uh, and they are the fastest, most mental model you can buy of this size. It's absolutely skit. So you may be able to tell by how much cracks and there's cobwebs over there. It's, that's how long it's been down there. Uh, absolutely bonkers. That is in the nose, a 3000 KV uh, NTM prop drive, half knackered bearings model, uh, motor in the front. Uh, it, oh, it does need a 100 amp ESC. I have, uh, what was it, a favourite uh, 100 amp ESC turn up here. So I might just stuff that in there for poots and giggles. Uh, stick of 4S in it. And again, uh, the reason why this one's looking rather worse for wear is because I've flown it absolute loads and I stuffed the nose in a while ago. Uh, and anyway, getting back onto my point is that I need to finish that one as well. So that also needs to go in the fixed pile. But let's not just stop with that one. We also have some great big sky hunter stickers now again i know many of you dave for example keeps going oh look the wings have appeared here my issue with the big and again if you don't know this the the big sky hunter uh is a 1.8 meter wingspan model it's only about 70 or 80 dollars i put a link so again i'll put links to it in the video description fantastic value for money it's loads of foam for your money uh, and it's a great FPV platform, but the thing is, is that as you'll find out in one of the Model Mondays, uh, is the XUAV Clouds uh, model is in there, and that's again, that's another 1.8 meter wingspan model, and is relatively easy to transport to the flight line. Whereas this, there's the Sky Hunter, you've got, you've got the fuselage which is big, you've got the wings which are big, and then you've got two stupid booms and an elevator system at the back which is just a complete pain in the ass to like transport it. It's like the least transportable friendly model ever created. Uh, and that's why I'm not infused about it. And again, I bought it, I was very enthusiastic to buy it. I've even laminated it. But to be brutally honest, I've already been and found it at home. So once I've got the Maiden out, I'm gonna say it's great because it is a great model, but I'm also gonna say all oh, you, it's not a model for me. Uh, the reason being is that I just like, and I'm looking over there, I just like my XUAV clouds more. Because it's just two wing parts, it's a twin motor model, and I, I just like it more. Uh, anyway, so that's my answer to that one. What else have I got kicking around in here? I've, oh, I've got the winglets to the Skywalker Smart, which is a model which is buried in the fix pile and I really don't want to show you the fix pile because it's just embarrassing. Uh, like to give you an idea right now, I've got the Comet, I've got the EF Extra, I've got the XUV A clouds in there which has got like a long list of shit to stuff, sorry, uh, to, to fix on it. I've got a wing which needs to get stripped for parts, I've got the right wing recon which needs to be worked on. Uh, I don't even recognise what that's in there. I've got the Escalibur in there to be fixed, I've got a mini Skywalker, I've got the clouds, uh, sorry, the AXN clouds over there to get fixed. I've got those three mini talons over there to get fixed. I've got the Hardcore 24, which needs to be revisited. Uh, I've got Yak 55, uh, the mini Skywalker, which I just threw over there. And I'm sure there's one, oh, there's a slope saw wing over there as well. The Zach Speed, which needs to get looked at uh, and relaminated. Uh, and that's just my fix pile. So do, do you ever wonder, like, I, I do get through models and there are models here which 
which stay out the course, like good models, which I really like, Mini Talon. We'll just say Mini Talon, Mini Drat, that kind of level of model. Uh, there are some very good models here. Uh, and then there's some other models which are pretty good and they're great in their own like in instances, uh, but I kind of lose my attention span with. Like the Yak 55, which was just a terrible model, but I need to get it in. It's been in that corner for blooming ages and I, I feel mean like throwing it away because it's fallen. To, it did catch on fire. If you've not seen that video, top right hand corner, there's a video of it catching on fire. And the thing is, is that it does fly kind of a right once you sort out the CG, which is terrible because you need so much weight in the nose. But the thing is, is that I'm loath to throw it out or just sell it or just give it away because I think it would make a good trainer for one of my daughters to use. So it's stuck there and it's in the pile and the pile just gets bigger and bigger. And because you go out on the weekend and sometimes, I don't smash any models and then sometimes in fact actually thankfully like touch wood uh, it's been handy the last couple of times we've gone out flying which has had like the fatalities on the model I think actually uh, what was it the of oh, the dynam whatever it was uh, rapid uh, is over there in that pile there somewhere uh, and uh, yeah that went out and uh, got smashed to pieces on just on his maiden threw it and <laughs> straight in the ground uh, and that one took some repairing uh, but that, that's the thing is that sometimes I can go out and I can fly and I have no fatalities in the models, you know, like they, no, none of them come back broke. And then other times I can go out flying and I end up breaking them all. And that's really disheartening at times, not because I broke the model, it, it is what it is. I was having fun at the time, I don't resent that. It's just the time which it takes to fix the bloody things, which really is just frustrating. Anyway. I've gone way off topic. What have I also got in the box? I've got two purple heads, which are supposed... Oh, I did have a pur purple head. Um, it's two covers for the Skywalker Smart. And again, that's a model which has been sat here for bloody ages. It's half wired up. The box is there with the parts in it, and I've just, frankly, just never got round to finishing it. Uh, what else came out at the same time? Oh, the Reptile Harrier, the S1100. Uh, which you'll notice is, that is no longer here. Good model, I really like the uh, thick EPP foam, uh, but then I've kind of thought about it. I'm only ever gonna use it for a tree bashing, and I've got a collection of other models which I can use for tree bashing instead. So that one actually went on to find a new home as well, uh, which is always a bit of a shame, because remember, I am buying these out of my own money, uh, and that one was a good chunk of cash. And it, don't get me wrong, it was a good model. Those of you which have got one, I'm sure you, you're gonna like it. Uh, twin, the twin motors in the sky is just a fantastic noise. But the thing is, is that I'd like, like you've just heard me rattle through a load of models which need to get repaired, and then I've got stuff on that side which has already been uh, repaired and ready to fly. And that's the thing, I'm not spoiled for models to fly, so I can be very picky and choosy, and also sometimes bloody ruthless on what stays and what goes. And unfortunately, that was one model which I spoke to someone when it was going to find it they were interested and the answer was yes so it's gone off to find a new home uh, and that's the side of my desk except for uh, sanding pads part of a tech sumo a load of quad propeller blades I don't even know why I've got quad propeller but I need well I got one quad well technically I've got four but one's just a frame there's one down there which is whatever I got 450 quad which I'm actually quite happy with but that's only for taking some video footage every now and again. Uh, and I've got Emma over there as well, which is the mental one. Uh, and to be honest, it's just covered in dust. I just don't fly multi-rotors. And I don't apologize for that, by the way. I understand why people like multi-rotors, but they're just not my cup of tea. And I bought a shed ton of propellers and I've just never used them. I've got, what else I've got down here? I've got, what is that? Oh, I've got a receiver. And, oh, that's a case. Oh, hello. What are you doing down there? That's how bad my orifice is. I've just found a Runcam Owl Plus down the side of the desk, which I think was supposed to be going in one of the pan and tilt systems, which is scattered over my uh, desk. So that's happy days. I put that in the corner for it to fall off again. Uh, I've got the front lid off the Suicide Bunny uh, over there, which is a micro sky hunter. So that's obviously needs to go in the fixed pile. Uh, and then I've got the lid, which is supposed to go on the yellow P39, uh, that Cobra 2 mo uh, model, which um, the landing gear was made of cheese. Uh, and anyway, I kind of got it in my, 
my head that I was going to convert it so that I've then got a warbird with a pan and tilt on it. I sprayed it, it's got it, and now that's half done as well. Uh, and I found a D4R receiver. That's not excluding the chargers, laminate, and other just random stuff just wedged down the side of the desk, all down the work side of the workbench. So, yeah, it is a bit disheartening at times. And again, that's it's just such an oddity. I, I, I'm sure it's much saner for you. And by the way, there's no script to this video. It's just just sharing some of my thoughts at the moment, which is that it's all fine and dandy reviewing said models and of course life would be easier if xyz company sent me the free stuff but the thing is is that i do kind of feel and i've, I've mentioned this many times before that it does bias what goes on is in the reviews and uh, i always like it. i i think that's probably like the biggest asset test for for any model in fact why don't we zoom in and we can have a closer chit chat there we go uh, and i always do kind of feel that um, it is important for, for you to know which models have stayed and which models have gone uh, and for us to do like seri like a series called Model Monday for example uh, because that will highlight the really good models which are worthy of special mention in Model Monday so so far at the time of recording you know about the mini track that one is model number one uh, model two I'm actually recording this on the Monday when the second episode goes out, so that you'll, know, you'll now know about the mini Talon. Uh, the XUAV Clouds is right up there. there. And there are, again, I don't want to spoil it for you, there are other models which I've got here which are very much worthy of being in featured in Model Mondays. But unfortunately, there are models which are need to be featured in Trash Tuesdays. <laughs> it's just the way it is. And the, the, oh, it can get, it can, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes things are a little bit complicated and it can be disheartening at times as well. Because uh, I've got some really nice models here. Well, like I'm just looking down. I've got the Mini Salon, the Mini Drac, uh, the WRA Spec Wing. Really enjoying that one. Really enjoying about that one. I need to get a video recorded later today, actually. So spot the green t shirt on when you're, doing, when you're watching the WRA Spec Wing uh, episode. I've got the Revenge Wing. Finally got that one trimmed in goes like whoa mental fast mental that that's definitely a keeper and i've got other models and stuff like i got two mini skywalkers and that's because i loved my first one so much i got a normal one which to be honest don't really fly and then i got suicide bunny which is absolutely schizo uh and then i've got some other models over here which um i've got to be brutally honest what was it the me 163 is i've probably got that wrong the comet for example, I always wanted one of them. I got one. It goes fast and stuff. It's got a great big fuse lodge. There is some potential to muck around like video wise with it. So set up for like a pan and tilt and maybe put the FPV camera inside the canopy. If I can be asked to do it. That's the thing is this, that that one's doomed. I'd give you like a little spoiler alert. What's going to happen to that one is that we are going to stick a rocket up its rear, but it's going to be the special rocket and I'll leave it as that. Uh, so that that one's uh, demise has already been planned to be to be brutally honest. And there's nothing bad against it. And against the Jurafly Emmy, well, just the Jurafly Comet one. There's nothing bad about that. One. I've always wanted one. I think they are good models. If you bought one, you would be very pleased with it. But it's not for me and that's that, that's actually quite a nice thing for me to be able to say is that some models are here and i can say they are definitely up my street and i've mentioned I've, by the way i've got like a bfg over there and a phoenix 2000 uh which are absolutely corking models and the bfg gets flown by my daughter a uh, brilliant trainer model a uh, bit anemic which is probably why it makes a fantastic trainer uh and the phoenix 2000 which does go out does get flown from time to time Rarely though, I hasten to add, uh, and it's big, slow, and I quite actually just like it, just chuckling around. Although, admittedly, the last but one time I took it out, and I did get kind of a bit of bored, and then was just flying it inverted across the flight line, seeing if I could chop the tail off uh, in the uh, wire going around the side of the, the, the landing strip. So, yeah, I, I do have quite a short attention span, I, I'm quite honest about that. And the models which I like stay, the models which I don't like, they go. Um, so, 
Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, we've, we've gone off on a bit of a tangent there, haven't we? And let me know if that's the same for you as well. Do you keep models for just because you bought them and you think you should keep them? Um, maybe you keep the wife happy? Or do you keep, or do you just chuck them out or just give them to a mate or something? Because that, that's what I found, yeah, there's been a whole collection of models which just got like, have them. I, I just fed up, but just not interested in them. And then there's other models like an EF Extra down there, the red one, which is just battered to pieces and it, I've snapped it in half twice uh, it's down there in the repair pole because I think I've blown one of them or at least one of the magnets out and it was making a horrible grindy noise so after me putting brand new bearings in the motor which I've never done that for any other model here ever uh, and I put new bearings in the motor because normally I would just pull I'll just buy another motor. Uh, but knowing that one, I thought, I know what it is. It's just the bearings. It's really easy. It's a circlip, couple of washers, take it out, poke them out with a screwdriver and job done. Uh, and I did that and it sounded brilliant for about, oh, I know what the issue is, is that I took it out and I think I did about six batteries back to back, 4S on it. Uh, and the ESC was almost on fire. The motor was almost on fire, but Matt was quite chilled out by then. I'd, I'd taken out all my uh, frustrations of the week uh, in the EF Extra with back-to-back -back flights with the uh, EF Extra. And anyway, getting to my point, there's models like that which are absolutely corking it, and they're, they're just me in a specific mood. Like, the Mini Talent isn't fast, but it's me in a specific mood, is that I want to chill out and just cover some ground and just enjoy the scenery, you know? Just just sit back and relax. And there, There's different models like that. So anyway, that was getting ourselves trying to get ourselves back onto the top eight, that was the, the side of the desk. And I, I feel a little bit better getting that off my chest. I hope you feel a little bit better just getting a quicker, like a little dose up with some RC stuff. Uh, the text wing little model is here. We'll go, we'll go out and get him flown. Uh, the Comet, oh, I, I've got a spare, Martin sent me a spare canopy. There we go, a uh, spare canopy. And it's very hackable, I think, and it's a very clear plastic which they've got in the canopy. Uh, so I, And it's very deep, so I do feel that I can get a pan and tilt in there. Uh, it's gonna be a bit fun in that one to see we can, what it looks like. Oh, our poor pilot. Oh, there's a screw holding our pilot in. <laughs> Good job, he needed that. <laughs> so yeah, I, I've gone off topic. I, I know I've gone off topic. Uh, that was, the side of my desk, like I said, what we got. There's a whole raft of models here which need to get completed at some point or another. I will get to them, but just keep in the back of your mind is that I have stuff, I have work in progress, I have like models being built, which I know admittedly some of them have now taken me more than one month, maybe several. Skywalker, for example, Sky Hunter, sorry, my bad, uh, the big one. And I, I've told you the reasons why that one is, because the claim is just so good, and I'd rather spend the, frankly, brutally honest, I'd rather invest what spare time I've got uh, in the upkeep or tweaking uh, of a model which I know that I'm going to be flying long term, whereas the Sky Hunter, the big Sky Hunter, not really interested in it. Like I said, I've got a mini Sky Hunter here, which I bought off Hobby King good blooming ages ago. I just need to get that built so I can go out and smash it up and say it's crap, um, which is... I know that's a brutal summary, but that's what I'm expecting. I'm not expecting good things of that model. Uh, well, anyway, we'll find out what happens with that one in the future. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine-ish. Uh, we'll see. Uh, and that's it, really. I I've got nothing more to say. I think I've covered my <laughs> crap hole. I feel better for getting this off my chest. I really do. I'm sure you know what it's like. You, you might only have one or two models, and your fixed pile isn't the size of... It would fill someone's dining room in here. Uh, it is really bad at the moment. And like I said, I've been pretty good the last couple of times I've been out flying. And I haven't had any big fixes, like terrible fixes. But the thing is, it's just that I've just not been fixing them. And the pile's just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and it's just stupid now. Anyway, that was the side of Matt's desk. And it's time for me to go. If you have any questions or comments about anything which we've been uncovered here, please just ask in the comments section underneath this video. Maybe you might make me feel a little bit better because you might have a side of your workbench which has got a couple of bottles rammed down there in the fixed pile, per se. Uh, do let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. You can do that in the uh, doobly-doo underneath this video on YouTube. So, with that said, for myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to, to sit here and have a bit of a chit-chat with me about RC models and sometimes 
some of the pains which come with the hobby, which is for me, I really hate the fix stage. To be honest, I don't really like the build stage. And I, I was going to wrap up, but there's a topic here. There's another point of discussion here is that there's there's like four stages to this hobby. I'm sure some of you heard me mention this before. You've got like a design stage, which is some people really like the design of aircraft and they'll put out pieces of balsa, they'll chop them up and, and go on and make a model, but never go on and fly them or may ne never go on to fly them. You've got people who just like the build stage. So that's not the design stage, they're just getting a kit or, uh, and that could be a foamy, that could be a balsa kit or something else. Uh, and put them on, and they just like that piece to the hobby, uh, and the flying is maybe secondary. Then you've got people who just enjoy flying. Uh, they're not that in necessarily that interested in the models themselves, they just like the flying experience itself. And then unfortunately, whether you like it, whether you're in parts one, two, or three uh, of this hobby, is that you have the repair stage, because it doesn't matter how much of a good pilot you are, uh, you are still gonna stuff models in the ground uh, from time to time, or models which require tweaks. And that's the thing, is that there are four stages to this hobby. I'm very aware that I much prefer the fly part. That is the bit for me. If Friday comes around and the weather's crap, I'm in a right grumpy mood for the weekend. Uh, and I don't really care for the design stage. I don't really care for the build stage. It's a necessary evil, okay? Uh, which I'm sure for some of you, the repair stage is a necessary evil of just going out and flying. Uh, but I'm fir firmly in basically, I'm firmly in the fly camp. I just want to fly, uh, and I enjoy models of different ilks, if that makes sense. I've got like an EDF, one decent EDF jet over there. Really, really uh, find interesting, and, and I like to fly it. And the reason why I like to fly it because you get a decent amount of battery life in it. And I like mini drag because it flies fast. I like fast models. I'd like some slow models. But most of all, I just like flying. I don't like the build stage. I don't, I've got no interest in the design stage. So I think that's probably glaringly apparent by now. Why we've done very. I think I've only done one scratch build, which was the Kefu over there. I absolutely love that model. The Kefu is amazing. Uh, every, everything else, no design doesn't do float my boat. There are other YouTube channels which are very much dedicated to the build, scratch build side of the hobby. Great, it's very inexpensive. I've got a box of bloody 40 sheets of Depron over there. And I think I haven't even used one, sh no, I have used, I've used about one and a half sheets of Depron uh, so far. So yeah, we have really gone off topic. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm gonna call this video now. Uh, confessions of an RC addicts the workbench, I, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll put something slightly uh, bemusing in the title. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this chit chat. It was nothing really formal, if that makes sense. It just has been me talking loudly about some of the challenges which we have when you have an addiction to RC model planes uh, and some of my pet hates, um, some of my likes, very much like, I very, very much like flying. Uh, like, I think I've only been flying what for a year a bit. Maybe oh shit. Uh, sorry, family friendly. Um, sugar. Uh, t it's always t two years now, something like that. Absolutely love it. Completely hooked. But the one bit which really annoys me is this blooming repair and build stage. Very frustrating. Uh, that's why when I get a model like the Fairwing, for example, and I just look, I take one look at it and I go, how can you make a good wing bad? Like the S800 definitely needs areas for improvement. They fairly knew about it and it pisses me off when a new or manufacturer comes along and just takes a step backwards. Uh, another prime example was Tech One, which you will know as being uh, the rebranded re -branded version of the Hobby King Bonsai. And I make no, I never apologise for setting fires with stupid ESCs or rejigging a model because they made it worse. And I frankly feel that they made it worse. And anyway, I've gone off on a tangent again. I think this needs to be a chit chat of tangents. There we go. We'll stick that in the title. Uh, I am really going to go now. Like I said, any questions or comments about any of the topics which I've covered here, uh, I would really appreciate your feedback on them. Uh, like I said, this has now turned into a bit of a heart to heart from one RC addict to another. Sorry, I mean that in a non-gay way. <laughs>
anyway, before this goes downhill, I'm off. I'm gonna. I think the kids have just come home. Just go and terrorise them for a half hour, and then go beat them up in Minecraft. Get in. Anyway, really, I'm going now for myself, Matt. I genuinely mean this. I really hope that you've enjoyed this chat. If you have, do me a favour, hit the thumbs up, and I'm off now for myself, Matt. Cheerios. <laughs>